prologue. It isn't that they can't see the solution. It is that they can't see the problem. G.K. Chesterton I realized after I started writing my book back in November 2007 that I had underestimated my calling. So around July 2008, my focus changed. I was no longer interested in my original topics on seducing women since it made me look as if I was teaching guys to become con men and instead of teaching how to respect women. My new view on life showed the amount of work it would require of me to complete my work as being more intensive than I thought it would be. It became clear to me that I would be required to take this seriously and concentrate all my energy fully on my calling in life as my most important goal and not as an afterthought. I grew up having no confidence in every area of my life. I did not know how to read or write, make a living, hold on to money, have a relationship, or even how to date women. One day, I decided to change my life, I grew my hair long, and as a result, my hair became the foundation of who I was then and who I am now. Therefore, as they say, the rest is history. So if you believe I do not understand where you are coming from, think again. My life is about thinking and being neutral positive. I am always thinking in a positive way. I believe anything is possible. How you operate daily when it comes to achieving what you really want in life is extremely important. So think big, think positive, and do it daily. Even if you are in prison or near death, be positive. You are a survivor, and that means you must look at obstacles as challenges that must be overcome and not as problems without solution. Here is an illustration. I want to open an office in Japan. I send you over there for a three-week stay to study the market for any obstacle that may prevent this new business venture from growing. I put you on a first-class flight, have you stay in a five-star hotel, and provide you with a platinum credit card to buy whatever you require. My expectation is that you will come back with a list of challenges and solutions so that I can begin my business venture. You, on the other hand, come back three weeks later telling me that Japan is not a good market to begin a new business venture. You only saw obstacles and therefore could not find solution to these problems. Be honest. If you were in my shoes, how would you handle this? Personally, I would fire you on the spot. Why? Why would I waste my money sending you to Japan, buying you a first class ticket, and all expense paid for entertainment, restaurants, and the best hotel if I believed deep inside me that there was no market there? You looked at this trip as a problem with no solution, while I wanted a solution to the challenges that exist but surmountable. Now, let us say that I send another person on this same trip. This person chooses to return earlier than expected with, however, a list of solutions to work with so that my business will do well there. See the difference? I learned this approach from the Torah when Moshe sends spies into the promised land. They, however, turned into problem-focused negative spies. They saw giants that could not be defeated and an enemy that was too powerful. In essence, an insurmountable force forcing them to wander 40 years in the desert because they were afraid of invading the land, believing the people there were too powerful. Yet, 40 years later, it took Yahshua to complete the invasion with solution-focused positive spy who found ways to defeat the perceived enemy. The point is that you must always work to find a solution when an obstacle comes before you. 
When you work to find a solution, it comes. In other words, you must not look at something as a problem too difficult to deal with. Better yet, another way to look at it is to take care of the issue before it becomes a problem. With Jezebel, I had a moderate relationship, yet I was in love with her. I lost her nonetheless. I allowed fearful thought of losing her to enter my mind, and to the fearful thought of loss became my dominant thought. I tipped the scale from thinking thoughts of strong relationship to thinking thoughts of loss, and I lost her. Furthermore, I realized that deep in my subconscious, I could not recommit myself to her, yet I could not end it. As I have said, I recently went through some very negative and unfortunate circumstance. This was the lowest and worst time of my life. Now ever, the fear of loss is gone. Nothing would scare me as much as this recent experience. As a result, I am tipping the scale back to who I really am. Now my thought is that no one controls what my life will be other than me. I should never lose myself or think negatively again because it is okay to fear. It is not okay, however, to let fear control you. Control your fear but transform it into a positive thing. I have seen and lived this personally. I have learned to use my fear and cause positive outcome. I have done this with others as well. This was not always the case. However, I knew my last relationship would end and that it would not end well. In 2005, I told my then girlfriend how we would break up and it happened exactly how as well as when I said it would happen in 2007. In reality, I created the breaking up situation well before it happened. If you see it in your mind, you are going to have it in front of you, both good and bad. You shall notice throughout my book, I use the term, the universe. However, you can change it to whatever belief you want from creator, God, higher being, maker, spirit, universal consciousness, and Yahweh. And the list goes on. Use whatever term makes you more comfortable in the end.